When Lynn lost her life for the second time, she was being detained on suspicion of my murder. But I saved her, hoping to solve my own mystery. Living creatures can choose to live their lives in one of two ways. They can either submit to their fate, or they can try to change it. Lynn is definitely in the second camp. As soon as I got back to the junkyard superintendent's office, this fact was really brought home to me. Fool! We told you not to let the suspect out of your sight. My apologies, sir, but I never th thought she would run away. Lynn is our angel, I mean, friend, I mean, she's like family to us. Angel, friend, or family, they all run when they have the chance. Do you have any idea how many years it's been since my wife, wife, since my wife ran away? I'm very sorry, I had no idea, sir. Humph, <laughs> you'll never make detective at that rate. Now, find Lynn. Yes, sir. If Inspector Cabanella gets word of this, it'll all be over. So our red-headed detective escaped, did she? But I just barely saved her a few minutes ago. Whew, she's fast. Well, I guess I'll look around for leads. Hello guys and welcome to TG on the Game Nerd the Shore. I talk about roleplay games and today we're going to be playing Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and saved Lynn from being assassinated by a hitman who had been hired by the same guys who killed us. And in this episode, we're going to go ahead and see where Lynn went because she seemingly just sort of disappeared. We have this guy over here who uh, has something to say. That old pigeon man, do you suppose he's carrying out some sort of research here? Look at these precious instruments and complicated devices. What are you doing? Sir, I think maybe this is how Lynn escaped, through here. She couldn't possibly fit in that tiny little elevator. Oh, I don't know sir, Lynn is pretty slim. Fool, don't you know that women can make themselves appear slim through fashion? To this day, I still don't know how much my, my wife really weighs. I'm very sorry, I had no idea, sir. <laughs> I'll never make detective at that rate. Anyway, where is that old pigeon man? Oh, him, sir? He went through the door behind me, sir. It won't open. Apparently, that door leads to the basement, but it's currently locked, sir. These instruments, they're all very suspicious. You better keep your eye on that old man, too. Yes, sir. So yeah, Lynn has what well, I suppose look pretty old, pictures of little fragments of rock. That old pigeon guy has some pretty strange taste in wall decor. <laughs> But yeah, Lynn has escaped through somewhere, seemingly. Oh. Hold on, what's this guy gonna say? I could swear I just saw this thing move. Don't tell me. Could it be? It sensed the tension between me and the detective and moved to get away from it. That was an unexpected tangent. I never, I'll never make detective at this rate. What I need is some sort of achievement, a feather in my cap. If only I could find a helpful lead, that might do the trick. Helpful and blindingly obvious lead is staring you right in the face. Or staring you in the face right now. You know. But yeah, I think we did this, um... When we went four minutes into the past, but if we shine the light on this, uh... Notebook right here that Lynn hid... Huh? This is Lynn's notebook. If I give this back to her, it might spark something between us. Hmm, what to do, what to do. This is a very complicated matter. What have you got here? What, this? Oh, uh, this is, um... Wait a minute, is that? Y yes, sir, it's Lynn's notebook. Notebook, eh? 
Come to think of it, there was something about that in the report. Something about her looking at her notebook and making a phone call. This must be it. This telephone number with the big circle around it. Aren't you curious to know who she was calling? I am. I really am, sir. I'd like to know. Oh, but I don't have any ulterior motive for wanting to know, though. No, sir. No, sir. This number might be an important lead. I'd better check it out. Hello? To whom am I speaking, please? Uh, what voice should I give this guy? Because I don't want to give him just, like, the basic police officer voice. Yes? Hello? This is a criminal investigation. We need your cooperation. Hey, I know that voice. Is that you, Detective McCaw? Oh, is that Officer Bailey? What's up, sir? You don't usually call this late. Oh, uh, did you get a call from one of our detectives, Lynn, earlier? From Lynn? Yes, I did. She calls every night. Maybe she senses it's about to happen. Did she say anything special? No, not really. Is something wrong, sir? Yes, well, <laughs> I might be contacting you again if I have any other questions. Let's head on down to KMR 2675. Or first, let's... I'm going to fi go file the report down at the station. I need you to be vigilant here. Excuse me, detective, but, uh, what is it? That notebook, would you mind if I gave... Uh, never mind, sir. <laughs> Just stay on your toes. Alright, let's head on down to KMR 2675. Oh, and what voice should I give you? Uh, I'll just do the normal police voice, but a bit more, like, mopey. What was that call about? I heard you say Lynn. I don't really know. If I had to take a guess, though, I'd pr I would probably say something's going on with her. <laughs> the only place in the world where nothing is going on is inside your brain, Bailey. Ah! What is that supposed to mean? I mean, I know what the words mean. That's not what I'm asking. That was my way of expressing my indignation, putting it in the form of a question. I just hope Lynn's not doing anything crazy. I'm a fan of hers, you know. According to my log, Lynn has been calling here nearly every night of us of late. So, let's see. This is the place Lynn took all that risk to call, eh? What, I, what exactly is this place? So this is Officer Bailey and the other officer. I forget what his name is, or if he even has a name. But they're like the perfect comedy duo in this game. I'm probably just gonna say that every single character in this game is my favorite, but it's true, all of the characters in this game are great. We have this memo right up here, uh, but instead of using this to get across, because we can't really do anything, we can just let this loose. Hey, what's this? Oh, that! I wrote down my duties for the night so I wouldn't forget any of them. Can't keep them in your head. It's not like you have a ton of duties after all. Use a little brain power. Ah! What are you talking about? Weren't you the one who said nothing was going on inside my brain? Hmm, didn't think you'd take it in quite that direction. So, let's see this important to-do list of yours. 9 o'clock, take prisoner C-38 to the telephone room. Yes, he just made a request to use the, file, the phone a little while ago. 9 o'clock, eh? 
That's usually when Lin calls. Well, we can't let her take... We can't let her talk to him tonight. Rules are rules. Oh, poor Lin. Sure wish I had, I could comfort her. Ah! What do you think you're doing? That's that's my important duties memo. That's okay. I've got it all memorized for you. Well, it's your duty to guard the telephone room, you know. Just make sure you do your job when the time comes. Hello? Lin. I'm sorry, I don't have much time. Please let me talk to him. Uh, I'm sorry, detective. I can't do that tonight. You can't? But you always let me talk to him before. Well, uh, the telephone room is already reserved. That's why. Oh. <laughs> By the way, is something going on with you tonight? What? Why do you ask? I got a call from one of the other detectives a minute ago, minute ago asking about you. Oh, really? Well, I don't think it's actually anything important. Officer Bailey? Do you think you could keep this call just between us? Even if only for tonight? Well, I, uh... Oh. Well, I've gotta go. I'll call again tomorrow. MHR 4481. Oh boy! Well, I guess I'd better call the detective division. Hold on there, Bailey. What? Don't tell me you're gonna report that call from Lynn. What else can I do? It's my duty. Just write it down on one of your important to-do lists, and then I can wad it up for you and throw it away. You mean, you want me to keep quiet about it? Well, isn't that what she asked you to do? Well, yes, but... Tonight is kind of a special case for us. Can't you make a special exception for my Lynn, too? Ah, <sighs> special case, huh? All right, you win. I've kind of turned him into Detective Gumshoe for some reason. I don't know why. Oh, almost didn't read this uh, thought bubble. Don't know what they think is special about tonight, but for me, it's my only night. Lynn is on the other end of that telephone line. I'd better hurry. Indeed, we will. Lynn! Lynn! Oh, why couldn't it have been me instead? I'm no use as a police officer. It should have been me! It looks like she's dead. We'd better not touch her. Who did this? Who shot Lynn? Hey, excuse me, mister. You talking to me? This room. There aren't any other exits beside this one, are there? Do you see one? Huh? Then how did... We must have... We must have one of those mysterious locked room murder cases on our hands. One of those cases where the murderer vanishes into thin air in a vacuum. Just go find a real detective. I'll keep watch here. Yes, sir. <sighs> what a terrible turn of events. So now a locked room murder, eh? Things never get dull for our redhead. I know of a certain inspector who might dance around a th at the thought of a mystery. But no mysteries for me. Not when I can rewind time and talk to the victim herself. Guess it's time to go back and see the truth behind this murder with my own eyes. So Lynn has died yet again. I think we should get a... Lynn death counter going on in this series because what is this now like five haha <laughs> I died again <laughs> I thought you'd be a little more grave under these under the circumstances get it grave 
Yeah, well, this is the third time, after all. Third time, plus, like, the two extra times that she... ...did die. Well, I'll edit it in post, and I'll see how many times she's died. Yeah, well, this is the third time, after all. It's scary what a girl can get used to, don't you think? Frankly, the way her mind works is a whole lot- a whole heck a lot scarier to me. So, what happened this time? Who shot you? I don't know. What? I'd like to know myself. Who could have done it? Who shot me? What are you asking me for? Oh boy, guess I'll just have to go find out for myself. Okay, you go do that. Hurry along now. I get the distinct impression I'm being used here. Okay, looks like it's time to go back. Back to four minutes before your death. How long has it been since I locked this room up in darkness? I once thought the truth could be discovered in darkness. Maybe it was just that the time wasn't ripe. He hung up. That's the truth behind our locked room murder? So the murderer was a mechanical, mechanical murder machine? Murder machine? When I came into that room, it was pitch dark, so I turned on the light. That must have been what set it off. The murder machine, I mean. Can you please stop repeating the words murder machine? That old pigeon guy must have made it, but why? What could be the meaning behind this weird room? Anyway, you'll have to find some way to stop that creepy machine. Once Cupid fires his arrow, it's all over. So now we're just gonna be kinda... We're just gonna kinda do what we do best and just wait here. You know what, Sissel? I think this death might be easier to prevent than the others. Why is that? You know, because the murderer is mechanical. She has a point. I can't manipulate living creatures, but I can manipulate this machine. Now I just gotta fight, fi figure out how to stop it. When the four minutes ago me turns on the light, that's when the murder machine is set in motion, apparently. It looks like the key is to, to solving this one. Is understanding this Rube Goldberg... Is understanding this Rube Goldberg machine. So here's some sort of, like, thing where... Okay, you already said this. Here's some sort of, like, thought that I had while I was, um... While I was playing this game on my own. So, when you go back to four minutes before the person's death, and the dead person is with you, then you manipulate something that changes it, which causes the person four minutes ago to do something that's completely different than... How did you manage to cram yourself into that tiny elevator? I've always liked small cramped spaces. Whenever I see a little hole or crevice, I always feel like crawling in. The place I feel most at home is that space between my bed and the wall. 
Yeah, I guess I can understand that. Ah, we're birds of a feather. We should get together and talk about it sometime. I've always had a fear of getting, like, cramped in spaces. Like, have you ever seen those videos of, like, people climbing into caves and then getting stuck between rocks and stuff like that? That's, like, one of my greatest fears. So we get to listen in on this call, and it's just... Oh, um, is this the superintendent? I'm so glad. I thought I was all alone. He hung up. So yeah, he just immediately, without saying anything, hangs up. So what do you say... It's all over. It's all over for me. Lynn, sweet, cute Lynn, who shines as bright as the sun, ran away from me. And then those detectives, matching bookends blue and green, yelled at me. And then the old man with the dirty blue dove on his head completely ignored me. If only somebody would give me a kind word right about now. You want to give him a kind word, Miss Bright as the Sun? Uh, let's see. Hang in there. That's all, you, all you've got? I'd like to see you do better. So I want to go ahead and close this uh, spout lid because it would shoot tea out and it would burn him. Lynn ran away, the detectives yelled at me, the old pigeon man ignored me, and then the kettle nearly scared me to death. My life is in complete shambles. That's gratitude for you. We were just trying to warn him with the kettle whistle. Would he have preferred getting scalded by the steam? Well, at least his fate was changed a bit. That's good anyway. So now, we can actually go into this room from the top. I think last episode, I accidentally did this, but there's a way that you can get in through the top, which will allow for us to uh, visit various places in the room. We can only attach to this ball, so we just gotta wait for the Rube Goldberg machine to start first, uh, which will allow the tennis ball to fall down, which then in turn... Let me go ahead and read this. There it goes! The murder machine has started! And if the whole thing plays out, that gun on the wall will go off. But before that happens, it's up to me to use my ghost tricks. There must be some way to disrupt, disrupt this domino effect. You just have to find it. Here it goes. So now that we're down here, we can open up this hatch, which, which will allow... ...for... ...us to do something. I think I messed this up, though. Well, I guess we get to see what happens whenever someone dies, so... Yeah, I forgot there's one extra step. I thought that she would just see the hatch and be like, Oh, I'm gonna jump down there. But no, we need to... Time's up. Why can't you just make me escape through that trap door in the floor? You and I both know that's impossible, Missy. Although, I thought I saw a new path open up when I opened that door. But did I miss my chance to get back on the main path afterwards? Guess I'd better rewind the clock again and see if I can pick up any other clues. So we have from the beginning, which of course starts the whole thing over, and then after fate change, actually brings us back to that moment when we stopped the policeman from getting scalded with the uh, hot tea or whatever's in the... I assume it's tea because it's a tea kettle. But yeah, now we just wait again, although we don't have to wait long, thankfully. But yeah, back to my thing I was talking about earlier. It's weird because, like, whenever we change something in the past and we have, like, and we have the dead person, like, with us as a ghost, and then the dead person from four minutes ago starts doing stuff different, like, does that mean that there's two of those person at the same time, like, the spirit one? from, like, the original, I guess, timeline, and then it's a more of, like, a branching timeline thing. And But then when they go back, the person remembers that they died, meaning that that, like, consciousness takes over the body of the person from the new timeline, or maybe they just gained, they just gained the memories from the old timeline? I don't know. I'm probably overthinking this. Uh, 
Ah, okay. Okay, now I see what I need to do. Let me go ahead and just, whoops, did not mean to do that. Let me go ahead and just, if you click the hourglass in the top right corner of the bottom screen, you can go ahead and just go back in time. Now I, ha I need to remember to uh, time this correctly. Alrighty. What just happened? Looks like your future just got a whole lot rosier. Your death has been erased. Again. I, uh, thank you. You kept your promise, didn't you, Sissel? My promise? You said I'd see you again if I died. I don't remember making any promises. It's all for my own benefit anyway. What could this room be all about? Hmm, I can't imagine. Those things that went off at the end, those were party poppers, weren't they? Party poppers? I have no recollection of what they are, but that's no surprise. The party popper... The party poppers, the gun going off, it seems familiar somehow. I'll leave that part of the puzzle to you. I have my own puzzle to figure out. Well, shall we go back now? Back to your new present? Sissel? Are you there? Lynn is... talking to me? If you're there, could you say something? If you're not there, I guess I'm just a weird girl who talks to herself. Well, you are kind of a weird girl whether you talk to yourself or not. So just like with Missile in a previous chapter, we can go ahead and talk to Lynn now that we've revived her. You are here! I knew it! I just had that feeling! Shame on you for stepping foot into a girl's head uninvited. Wait a minute! Don't give me that a ghost doesn't have feet bit. It's just a figure of speech. Hey, did I say anything? There, that tone! It, it's that tone of yours that makes me mad! So, did you have something particular you wanted to say to me? I just thought... Uh, uh, I just thought I'd share some information with you. Completely forgot to do my voice there. I'm investigating a case right now. A murder case, and I'm doing it alone. A murder case? All by yourself? Yes, well, that's because the case was closed a long time ago. The culprit is already behind bars, forgotten by the world. So, why are you looking into it, then? Because I think the person's innocent, that's why! There's something strange behind the case, some big mystery, I firmly believe that. So anyway, I'm finally- I finally have my memory back, but I'm not at liberty to tell you about the case. But if there's anything else you want to know, I'll try to answer what I can. Lynn is my only lead, I would like to ask her a few things. About the one who shot me. You have your life and your memory back now. So let me ask you again, who shot me tonight? Yeah, I thought that might be the first thing on your mind. What else would it be? There's a good chance I was shot at while I was with you, after all. I'm afraid my memory is just isn't clear on that part. Not clear. I met with you tonight, and then you fell down right in front of me. I think I remember seeing that part. I'm pretty sure you were shot, maybe from somewhere far away? So you didn't see the culprit? I'm sorry, I wish I could be of more help. But I know I wasn't the one who shot you. Your colleagues seem to think you're a suspect, though. I wanted the information you had for me, so why would I shoot you before I got it? Information, huh? I wonder what info I had for. Her. About the information. So I had some important information that you wanted, huh? That's right, you called the station yesterday, and you asked to talk to me. You told me you had an important lead on the case I was working on. Important lead, eh? You said you wanted to meet me and talk to me directly tonight at the junkyard. And you fell for it? Even given how fishy it sounds? You're the last person I want to hear that from, you know? 
but I just couldn't let it go no matter how shady it seemed. That's because I'm running out of time. Hey, that's right. You said something was going down tonight. Does that something have to do with the case you're working on? I'm sorry, but I can't talk about it. Oh boy. But I guess I did understand. By the way, I see you have a little roommate. Camilla? How do you know about her? There was a tiny incident in your apartment a little while ago. An incident? What kind of incident? What happened? Is Camilla alright? She is fine, thanks to her loyal little friend, Missile. Although I did have a little trouble bringing him back to life. Oh my! What in the world is going on? Why would anybody want to hurt Camilla and Missile? You're being targeted by a certain organization. What? I saw them. The people who were calling you their target. So I'm a suspect and a target? Could this night possibly get any worse? It does sound pretty rough. Are you sure you'll be okay on your own? Huh? You know what they say, when it rains it pours. Isn't it time you admit it you need me? Need my powers? I'm sorry. I can't cooperate with you. Yes, you saved my life tonight. I'm completely grateful for that, but as a detective, I still can't trust you. That's too bad. So, what are you gonna do now? Run, I guess. They'll catch me again if I don't get out of here, and I have to get to the restaurant. I'm worried about Camilla. Oh yeah, what was it? The chicken kitchen on Dead End Drive, right? What about you, Sissel? What are you going to do? I don't know, to tell you the truth. You're my only lead. If you leave... I just realized, you and I are in the same boat. We're both looking for answers tonight, and neither of us has anybody to help us. That about sums it up. Hey, even if you can't cooperate with me, how, how about if we agree to use each other? That's... not a bad idea. You're on. But can I ask you a favor for me first? What's that? I need you to sneak into a certain place for me. A prison, to be exact. A prison? That's the place I was calling from the office upstairs. I want you to go find out a certain prisoner's work schedule for tomorrow. Work schedule? For a prisoner? Yes, the prisoners are given different job details every day. Each prisoner's schedule for the next day is written on the small blackboard in his sale. So, just go check out a certain prisoner's blackboard, huh? Okay. His prisoner number is D99. If you do that for me, I'll cooperate with you. Okay, you're on. Okay, see you. See you. But don't die again, if you can't help it. It looks like I hold the key to the case Lynn is investigating, and she holds to the key to, sol to solving the mystery of me. So we started up a strange relationship of cooperation. Lynn gave me an assignment. My task is to go check out tomorrow's work schedule for prisoner D99. I better get to the prison. <laughs> 